Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see the comparison between ASME Section 8 Division 2 and Division 1. Our flagship courses are Master Static Equipment Design and PVE Light, ASME Section 8 Division 2, and Master Welded Storage Tank, as per API 650. We have curated courses to suit your learning needs, so do visit our learning platform for more details on scutoid.thinkific.com. So, the main difference between Division 2 and Division 1 is? Come on, what is the main difference in Division 1 and Division 2? What do you think is the main difference? It's there in the presentation also. Pressure range is the difference. Allowable stresses. Okay. So, factor of safety, which is again linked with the allowable stress. So, Division 2 is having higher allowable stress, okay, which is the biggest advantage of using Division 2. Okay, and that is the reason everything is moving towards Division 2 now, okay, because it has very higher division, uh, higher allowable stresses compared to Division 1. Anything else, like you know, some uh, Hardeep is saying pressure range. Okay, so is the pressure range a difference? Can you point out what is the pressure range in division one and what is there for division two any range is there for division two any range for pressure like limit 15 to 3000 for division one yes but even you know if you read that clause of division one closely even you can breeze the 3000 psi okay that is not the actual limit you can go beyond that and 15 PSI, again, you can go below than that also. Division 2, whether Division 2 will be 3000 to 10,000, is it true? Many, uh, you know, many of you think that from where Division 1 stops, you consider 3000 as the boundary, which is not a boundary. And remember, Division 2 is not having any pressure range, no pressure limitation. Okay, there is no pressure limitation given. Again, the starting point like 15 PSI, that is there, but that is also, you know, can be waived if you want to design a lower pressure. That is also not a hard and fast rule. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. So that is the second thing. Any other difference from Division 1 and Division 2? Any other difference in Division 1 and Division 2 apart from pressure and high allowable stresses? Anything else you can think of? Secondary stresses? Failure theory. Okay. So, what is the theory on which Division 1 is based? On which theory Division 1 is based? Maximum principal stress theory. Okay, so it will consider only one stress, which is the maximum. It will not consider the stresses in other direction. Okay. It will just ignore. It will take the maximum stress and then compare it with the allowable. And that's it. Okay, no other stresses comes into picture. What about division two? Shear stress theory or one mises? Or distortion energy. So, provincing maximum principle for part four. Okay, now, now it's a new thing. Okay, so there are two parts: part four and part five. Okay. So basically, we don't classify it now as a part four and part five because code is now based on class one and class two. Okay, that will be the more, uh, you know, relevant thing. So class one, which is based on part four. So part four, the rules designed by rules, which are given that is based on what? Okay, there are two different theories, part four and part five. So part four is designed by rule. Part five is designed by analysis. So whether both are based on same theory or different. First, let's, let's answer that and then we'll see what part four is based on what and part five is based on what. 
part five is one mice. So everybody agrees to that. And one mice is also uh, the second name is distortion energy theory. Okay. So distortion energy or one mice are same. Okay. Even the maximum stress energy theory, that is again the distortion. Same. Same name is uh, having actually three different names. One mice is distortion energy or shear uh, stress energy. Okay. What about part four? Part four is based on what? Which theory part four is based on? Part four is based on shear stress theory. Okay. So, so remember shear stress and shear stress energy theory, which is distortion energy, both are different. Okay. So part four is shear stress theory, which is simple shear uh, stress theory, which we also learned in SOM, strength of material subject, sigma one minus sigma two divided by two is equal to Fy divided by two should be you know, less than Fy by two. So that is the shear stress theory, right? Uh, distortion energy is like sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square and then plus sigma 2, sigma 3 and then under root compared with Fy. Okay. So, part 5, 1 moises or distortion energy. Part 4 is shear stress theory. And division 1 is maximum principal stress theory. Clear to all of you. Now, any other any other difference in division one and division two? We covered theory, we covered allowable stresses, we covered fatigue. So, what is the difference related to fatigue? Okay, we'll go one by one. So, fatigue. What is the difference compared to fatigue in division one and division two? If fatigue is there in division one, how you will design? See the rules are given in division one for fatigue. You you will use U2G. Okay. So by using U2G, you will come to division two and take help of division two for fatigue. Okay. What about cyclic or no cyclic or fatigue? What about creep? What you'll do for creep? Any guideline given for creep? Anything given in division one? No. Okay. In division two, even by using part four, you can do some primary calculation of creep. Okay. We'll see that. Okay. So if you see division two, even you can calculate some local stresses. Okay. Local stresses between cylinder to cone. That is also you can calculate. There's a formula for that. Okay. Uh, division 2 external pressure calculation. It's very interesting. Completely different from division 1. Okay. And it is more accurate. You can save lots of material in that. Okay. So division 2 is beneficial in that way also. If you compare about non-destructive examination, then division two will be a little bit more stringent. Okay. If you talk about weld joint, division two will be more stringent. Okay. No partial penetration welds, no uh, fillet welds. Only fillet welds are not allowed. One partial penetration not allowed. So the weld joints should be very rigid. No? Full penetration joints are required for division two so welding wise uh nde wise it is more uh conservative okay it's a uh, uh costly if you consider these you know terms okay impact testing yes we'll talk about the rules are different but we'll talk about that okay so these are the differences in division one and division two will again run through what we have given. So division two is based on part four shear stress theory, part five one minus stress theory. Okay, there are load combination. 
Okay, we forgot about that. This load combination given in division two, how the load should be combined. There is no guideline in division one. Okay, but division two, it's very clear guideline listed. There is a table which you can refer to how you will combine wind and seismic to the pressure. Okay. So it's given snow load, dead weight, how you will combine it is available. Okay. So formula for local stress calculation like uh, junction of cone and shell, you have the formula and very advanced set of formulas. Okay. Uh, so this is the division. Division 2, you will see the changes in every addition is enormous okay, compared to division 1 or any other division. So division 2 seems to be in the you know uh, complete focus of ASME. The reason being, uh, you know, that people, you know, most of the industry for high pressure equipments, they are using EN13445 or PD5500. Okay. These are all designed by rule codes. Okay. And covers lots of rules for calculation. Okay. So people use that. Okay. So ASME realized that if that happens, if those codes become more popular, popular, then ASME will you know start becoming less popular. So they want to cater to that market also. Okay. So if you see division two, the basis itself is one three four four five. Okay. The basis for division two is one three four four five. En one three four four five. Okay. So they are trying to take everything by referring EN31445, but there is a pressure vessel research council which works for ASME, which you know completely uh, doing all these you know calculations and comparing. So doing test, verifying that uh, you know uh, formulas with actual example and you know, addressing. So division two, you will see lots of changes every time. Okay, so it's using all the advanced set of formulas. Okay? To find the stresses and continuous changing so that it uh, become more popular you know, for high pressure vessel industry okay uh, even division three okay which is for very high pressure uh, it is being said that in five to ten years the division three will be merged with division two okay division two will take over division three so everything which is there for high pressure because the uses of division three are very less very few times people use that so now they are trying to merge it with division two so division two will become you know a code to go with everybody will start using so it's a very right time you guys you know started for division two so it's a now mandatory thing it's not uh, only good to know thing but very soon it will become must to know okay so robust well design avoids partial penetration wells okay and also fillet wells it try to avoid that very extensive nd see if when division 2 started you know that radiography was full there was no other option you had to do complete radiography when the code started in uh, the 60s so it was completely based on 100% radiograph, but now it has been reduced. So mix of ultrasonic and radiography, you know, now the requirements are you know, less so that we can use it more. Now the safety, what you, do you think about safety? See, uh, if we know that we see that factor of safety in terms of the allowable stress calculation right so part four is having factor of safety of three okay that is what we call part five two point four and division one three point five so looking at it what does it look which code is having more safety division one or division two which code is having more safety looks like division one right but if you compare see you are seeing only the calculation wise only allowable stresses okay here they have reduced the 
uh, factor of safety in terms of allowable stress, but increased in terms of ND and calculation. Both are now, so we are calculating local stresses also. Okay. So you are spending more and analyzing, okay, and you are giving a higher factor of uh, lower factor of safety and higher allowable stresses. Okay. So if you compare the safety, it is equivalent. Okay. It's not more or less, it is equivalent to division one. Okay. So now think equivalent safety you are getting with much reduced thickness. Okay. So for high pressure and large diameter, it's an obvious choice. Okay. You will save a lot in material compared to that. Uh, so design cost is not much, you know, maybe 20, 30 percent higher because you can use the same software. Okay. And ND also not much difference, little bit more. Yeah, testing cost will be little more, but not to that expect. Okay. If the material diameter size is very large, you save a lot in material cost. Okay. So earlier it used to be that you know, uh, division two cost for the same vessel used to be two to three times higher. Okay. See, definitely this, when we say this figure, there are lots of assumption. Okay. Because unless you have particular dia you know, and pressure, you cannot talk about these things. Okay? But now that same factor has reduced a lot. Okay. So it has become much closer. And that is the intention of ASME to bring it closer. And then only people or the industry will start using it. Okay. So a little bit higher fabrication cost still. Okay. Now who will decide whether you have to design as per division one or two? It's the owner. Okay. Or it's designated as an or client. Okay. For in-depth training and to learn more about these courses, register with the link in the description.